So like this. And what I'm doing with this note is I'm just playing the top note of the left hand voicing just to keep the rhythm moving a little bit more. So for example, and you can do this with more than just the top note. You can do the top two notes like this. Or you can just do the top note like this. Play the chord and then repeat that top note. In this video, we're gonna take a look at what to do with your left hand when you solo. Hey, it's Paul Toby here from jazzmental.com. Thanks for joining me for another one of my tutorials. Just the other day, I received a request from Alessio. He had this question in the community on YouTube. He says, forgive me if this sounds like a silly question, but it's something I've struggled to find information on and most jazz musicians say, hey, just vibe it, man. When they ask them, that sounds like a typical jazz musician for sure. And he goes on to say, but as well as developing melodic solos, I've always wanted to know how you can use your left hand voicings to build solos whilst accompanying the solo melody. Are there any tricks that can help build a solo in this way? Or is it just an unspoken rule people just vibe out? <laughs> well, like I said, I, I think people who respond like that may not be able to explain it technically and that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. We're going to take a look at a recent solo recording that I did of the tune Emily. And in that tune, I do several different things with the left hand, which we're going to talk about specifically in this video. And I'll show you exactly. By the time you complete this video, you'll have several new ideas that you can apply to your left hand when soloing. And you can start practicing that right away. The first thing we're going to do is listen to the solo on Emily. I'm gonna skip through the head section, just play the last few bars, jump into the solo. We'll listen to it together and I'll stop every now and then when I see what I'm doing and I can explain it here at the keyboard. Let's go. So the idea is alternate the left and right hand. Put the left hand in when the right hand isn't playing. For example, play a couple of notes in the right hand and we're doing one, six, two, five in the key of G, which is essentially the first two bars of Emily. And it is in three, four times. So it's a little bit different than four, four, but not too much. So what we're gonna do is just play a couple of melody notes like this, and then throw the left hand voicing in like this. Get the idea? If you always play them at the same time, it doesn't have the same impact or effect because the left hand is actually adding to the solo by playing the chords when the right hand isn't playing. So that's an interesting idea. Let's listen a little bit more and see what else we can pick up. Okay, right there. So rather than just playing the right hand soloing all the time, play chords as well with the left hand. So for example, let's say we're going through the solo. Then play a couple of chords. And then back into the soloing. Stop thinking about just playing lines and just play a couple of chords together with the left hand. Let's do a little bit more. So 
So that's what I mean by mixing up the solo. If you just play eighth notes in the right hand all the time, or a combination of eighth notes and triplets a la Bill Evans, if you just stop and, and, and play some chords, it makes a nicer solo because it breaks up the monotony of the right hand. All right, let's keep going. All right, there's a couple of ideas that I heard there. The first one is there's this descending line cliche that goes on in the bass. And let's take a look at the actual lead sheet and find out where that is. And I'm gonna point it out. It's right here when it descends from this C sharp half diminished seventh, goes down to C, then down to B, and you can use the tritone substitution of E flat and put B flat then A and then A flat. So as it goes down, think about playing one and seven with the left hand. Let's play that passage now. Just one and seven with the left hand, C sharp half diminished seventh, and then C minor seventh, and then B half diminished seventh, then B flat, and then A and then A flat. So you've got this descending pattern. So rather than just playing a bunch of different chords like this in different inversions, Just play that descending line, and then the right hand can figure out what it's doing from that, like this. Get the idea? It's a really nice descending line, and the right hand can just play melodic things within that. Okay, without the mistakes, obviously. And just before we go any further with this video, I'd like to ask you, if you like videos like this, it really helps the channel if you just reach down, hit that little thumbs up button. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, you can hit the little bell and we'll notify you of all the upcoming videos that we're making. Thanks in advance for doing that. Let's move on a little bit more and see what else we can pick out from this solo. Right, so I continue to do this a little bit more and I was gonna talk about it just with the last one, but I didn't wanna to get too like messed up and too many ideas at once. So here's the next idea. When you play, especially in three, four time with the left hand, there is things that you can do to accentuate the proper beats. So for example, let's go to the lead sheet itself and what you would do with the left hand, let's just take a bar and write in the left hand. So I've got a dotted quarter note to an eighth note. So like this. And what I'm doing with this note is I'm just playing the top note of the left hand voicing just to keep the rhythm moving a little bit more. So for example, and you can do this with more than just the top note. You can do the top two notes like this. Or you can just do the top note like this. Play the chord and then repeat that top note. You'll hear that a lot as I move through the rest of the solo. Let's keep going and listen to it. See what I'm doing with my thumb in the left hand right there? So there's an example of something else that I do very often is rather than just play a single note in the left hand, play some type of rhythm like this. Change it up a little bit. Right? Sometimes alternating with the right hand like we did in the first example. Now, 
the rhythms obviously change up. It's a lot more difficult to do this in 3-4 than 4-4. Four, 4-4, four. Four, four, you have a lot more choices. In 3-4, it's kind of like beat one and then the and of two. That's what we just talked about. So what you have to do is you have to figure out things to do within that framework. It's a lot more difficult to play on the and of one, to play on the and of three. It really feels like it should be one and and of two, which is kind of what we're doing here. So in addition to playing that pattern, what you want to do every now and then is just throw down a shot. All right, let's give an example of, of shots that would be thrown in in the middle of your solo. Aggressive in terms of rhythm than just playing on one and the end of two. And you can play with the right hand as well. Bill Evans used to do that a lot. He would play soloing the right hand and he'd often play the same rhythm as the right hand like this. Some neat ideas. Let's keep going. Okay, there's another idea. So the idea is I will anchor the bass note while playing, but I'll anticipate that with an eighth note before the beat. So for example, let's say I wanted to get down to this D7 chord here. What I would do is I would play an eighth note and then play the D on this chord here. So I might anticipate that by a fifth above. So go from the A to the D and then play the chord. It's like stride piano. You'll hear me do that again throughout the rest of the solo. So anticipating that bass note with an eighth note beforehand. Let's listen a little bit more. There's that descending line again. Okay, there's an idea where we're not playing shots, we're playing chords together. So something like this. Get the idea? So I'm just kind of throwing in those padded chords just to break up the solo a little bit and you're playing both hands together. Actually, let's listen to that one more time. Right here. There, right there. That's where I did that anticipating eighth note, like here. I think I went down to E. Okay, one last idea. What you heard there, and I'm just gonna play that one more time. Right there. So that's counterpoint. So the right hand is doing this. I think is what's something I played. And then the left hand moves the opposite way. So if we're just doing a turnaround a minor 7 to D7 to G7, you might do something like this. So just playing 
single notes with the left hand, but just using notes from the scale, sometimes chord tones, sometimes not. So for example, even if you just did this, we used to do that in classical music. Just counterpoint, right? So if we did this, Let's play that one more time. Right here. Hear that? And then all I did was at the end just put in some chords. Something like that. And then eventually what happens is you just get back into the head. Now, a lot of times when you're doing the head, it's very different than soloing. So we'll leave that for another video. I hope you got some good ideas from this. Alessio, thanks so much for the question. I think it's an important question and I think it's a quite a bit more detailed answer than just vibe it, man. I hope it helps you out a lot. If you have any ideas that you'd like to share about what you do with your left hand during soloing, there's quite a bit more than I've discussed here, but if you have some tricks that you'd like to share with me and Alessio and everybody else in the Jazz Mental Group, you're more than welcome to do that. Just put it in the comments below and we'll see if we can include that in one of our other videos. And if you're looking for some more ideas on how to tackle tunes like Emily, I did a recent full advanced jazz piano tutorial on the tune Emily. You can find that video right here.